Imagine that you are a foreign bank and that your money was equally divided 50-50 between your country's currency, let's call it CC, and US dollars. In order to allow other people to exchange between your currency and US dollars, you decide to combine these two currencies together into one pool. You can then charge people a small fee to use your pool to swap back and forth between your country's currency and US dollars. You get to receive swap fees in return for supplying or providing your money in a pool, and people get to exchange or swap between your country's currency and US dollars. Now, imagine that there was a marketplace where you could go alongside other banks to deposit your currencies together into a communal pool. You would still earn your share of the exchange fees as people used your pool to swap between your currency and US dollars, and this marketplace you joined would also give you additional incentives for providing your money to their marketplace. By joining this marketplace, you now get to receive those additional incentives on top of receiving the swap fees in return for providing your money to the swap pool. People then get to use that pool to swap between your provided currencies, and the marketplace also benefits by receiving a small share of the fees generated. Now, there can be several different types of marketplaces and several different types of pools within each marketplace, and with varying amounts of incentives to attract users like you to deposit their money into these different pools to receive those swap fees and additional rewards. You can imagine that many people would be interested in depositing money into these marketplaces, and specifically into pools that provided the greatest returns in both additional incentives and swap fees. The more money deposited, the more other users could swap between a wide variety of currencies with ease. Believe it or not, if you can understand this, then you have understood the basics of decentralized finance or DeFi. DeFi is a community-built financial system based on cryptocurrency technology using these exact same principles I just described. In DeFi, you are that bank. You have the ability to diversify your money into a wide variety of cryptocurrencies. When you combine two cryptocurrencies together and deposit the resulting pair into a pool, better known as a liquidity pool, that allows other users the ability to use your pair to perform swaps between those two cryptocurrencies through a decentralized exchange or DEX. In return, you as the liquidity provider earns swap fees generated by other users who are using your liquidity to perform swaps. The more swaps made, better known as swap volume, the more fees you get to receive as the liquidity provider. Naturally then, most liquidity providers are interested in providing liquidity into pools that generate the highest swap volume because that is where the most money is in terms of swap fees. Don't forget too that within DeFi, by depositing liquidity into a DEX, you as the liquidity provider also gets to earn additional incentives in the form of that DEX's cryptocurrency. For example, Dystopia is a DEX that rewards liquidity providers with their DYST token at a variable APR. Another example is Cone, which rewards liquidity providers with their Cone token, also at a variable APR. So, within DeFi, you can combine two cryptocurrencies together and deposit that liquidity pair into a DEX like Dystopia or Cone, and in return, you will receive DYST or Cone tokens, respectively. Now, you may think that the majority of people would simply sell their earned DYST or Cone tokens for a profit, and some do. But this is where DeFi gets more sophisticated than some might think. 
Remember how I said that in addition to receiving additional incentives like DYST and Cone, liquidity providers receive swap fees in return for providing money into a pool? Well, this is actually where state-of-the-art DEXs like Dystopia and Cone stand out. These DEXs do not actually give the swap fees to liquidity providers. The liquidity providers still earn the additional incentives as DYST and Cone respectively. Instead, those swap fees are awarded to people who believe in the long-term success of that DEX, people who have an actual financial stake in the project. The only way to earn swap fees with these DEXs is for liquidity providers to, instead of selling their earned DYST or Cone tokens, lock them into the DEX for as short as one week and as long as four years. Then, and only then, can they receive the swap fees. Now, the trick as to what ties this all together is that not only do people who lock their DYST or Cone tokens receive the swap fees, but they also get to vote on the different liquidity pools of that DEX, and the longer a user locks their tokens, the more votes they can direct. The more votes that a pool receives, the more additional incentives in DYST or Cone that pool pays out to liquidity providers. Since voters receive swap fees, they are going to want to vote on pools that generate the highest swap volume and therefore the highest swap fees. This creates a flywheel effect or a positive feedback loop, as more votes on a pool will push more rewards to liquidity providers, attracting more liquidity providers to deposit liquidity there, to deepen the liquidity pool, to allow for more swap volume to occur, producing even more swap fees and more incentives for voters to vote on that pool, and the cycle continues. This creates a sophisticated, tokenized game theory known as VE33, or Vote Escrowed Staking, whereby both liquidity providers and those who vote lock their reward tokens are united under the same goal of producing the highest swap volume and therefore the highest swap fees. What keeps this system in balance is that the more DYST or Cone tokens locked, the lower the rate of inflation, and the less DYST or Cone tokens locked, the higher the rate of inflation. Also, those who both lock DYST or Cone and provide liquidity stand to earn the most because they actually get to earn boosted incentives when providing liquidity and, of course, receive the swap fees from the pools that they voted on. In addition, other users can provide even further incentives for voters, called bribes, to encourage voters to vote on specific liquidity pools to direct higher rewards. Higher rewards for liquidity providers will, of course, attract more liquidity providers to deposit there, building liquidity, swap volume, and ultimately swap fees. Now you have a system where liquidity providers earn DEX rewards, and those who vote lock those rewards are the ones who receive swap fees as well as extra rewards, including bribes. And those voters determine the amount of rewards directed to specific liquidity pools such that all users are united under the common goal of generating the most swap fees. On top of that, you can create protocols that actually aggregate voting power to optimize and simplify high yields for all users, liquidity providers, and vote lockers alike. For Dystopia, Penrose is its yield and voting aggregator. And for Cone, Unknown is its yield and voting aggregator. Even though this is more complicated than simply receiving swap fees in return for providing your money in a pool, it creates an economic system where users with different objectives can unite under a common goal of swap volume, creating sustainable incentives 
for both liquidity providers and those who want to take part in a long-term stake in the DEX. Ultimately, these VE33 tokenomics lead to more liquidity. This is all important because more liquidity helps reduce slippage, which is the difference between a swap's expected price and its actual price. The more the liquidity, the lower the slippage, which leads to more swap volume and therefore more swap fees. Now that you're down this rabbit hole of understanding DeFi, let's take things one step further. Remember how I said that long-term stakers, aka voters, in these DEXs receive swap fees and also get voting rights to determine which liquidity pools receive the most rewards and therefore determine the flow of liquidity from liquidity providers who will seek out those high rewards. Well, what if you had a single, unifying token that had voting rights in all of these decentralized exchanges, including Dystopia and Cone, and their respective yield aggregators, Penrose and Unknown, and had voting rights in other supporting and valuable cryptocurrency projects? With that one token, not only would you have a representation of a diversified portfolio of valuable DEXs and projects and be earning revenue from all of those projects, but you would also have the ability to use that token to vote within all of these other projects with the highest possible level of voting power. That one token would be able to control the flow of liquidity through all of these projects, not only would that one token be highly treasured as a voting kingpin, but other users and other projects would want to offer incentives to direct that token's voting power. With all of that revenue, that one token could continue to expand its voting rights, providing more and more relevance to its holders. Now, imagine that on top of all of that, there was a limited supply of that token, and part of the revenue that this token earned throughout its entire ecosystem was automatically routed to permanently and continually reduce the circulating supply of that token. What you would get is a single token that represented an entire portfolio of other cryptocurrency projects with a multitude of revenue streams for both the token itself and that token's holders and where a portion of revenue always went to constantly reducing that token circulating supply. What you would get is Sphere. Sphere Finance makes DeFi simple for its holders. Sphere is supporting and building these state-of-the-art protocols including Dystopia, Penrose, Cone, Unknown, and more. Sphere has significant voting rights within these and other supporting and valuable cryptocurrency projects, and this is just the beginning. Hence, the S&P 500 of crypto. As Sphere and its synergistic ecosystem expands, the voting rights of Sphere holders will also grow and grow. In addition, revenue from Sphere's growing and synergistic ecosystem is and will continue to be routed to buy and burn sphere tokens, creating an ever-shrinking circulating supply, making each remaining sphere token more and more treasured. This is the vision of sphere finance, and it is this and more that sphere finance is building for its holders and for its entire growing and synergistic ecosystem. The power of all DeFi simplified to one token. Visit our website today to learn more and consider becoming a Sphere holder. Please keep in mind that I am an educator. I am not a financial advisor and therefore this is not financial advice. Additionally, cryptocurrency and especially decentralized finance has a high learning curve, but with patience and perseverance, I assure you that you will begin to understand how it all works and, most importantly, how you can best use these DeFi tools. Click the link on screen now to watch another video. Thanks for watching and always remember that you matter for who you are.